This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Dell XPS 15. Again, same chassis, same design. This is the 9570 model for 2018. Sorry it took us so long to get to this review, but Dell took a very long time to get review loaners to, well, us reviewers. I suppose the good news there is that, you know, Dell usually has some teething pains when a new model comes out and they need a couple of driver updates and a couple of BIOS revisions. Well, this one has the latest, greatest 1.2.2 BIOS, several iterations along. So hopefully everything's about as stable as they're thinking that they can get. It. So like I said, same chassis here, same display options with one slight change, which we'll talk about there. Uh, the same keyboard, the same Windows Precision trackpad, the same battery size options, and the same processors, only they've moved up to 8th generation Intel processors. So that's the change here. They haven't refreshed anything else inside. Unfortunately, they really haven't changed the cooling system either. The last generation ran hot. The XPS 15s have always run hot, and now you've got 6 cores instead of 4. So a little more heat inside. We're going to look at it now. So if you like the look of the Dell XPS 15, you're in luck because they're still using it. We don't know when they're going to do a redesign. It's still a nice enough looking laptop with that carbon fiber interior that feels nice to the touch and all that sort of thing. So the price still starts at around $9.99. And that, that's the neat thing about what Dell does. They have always taken a laptop and offered a whole bunch of different options. So the XPS line is the expensive line, yet you can still get one that's starting at $999. How do they do that? You can get it with a Core i5-8300H. Now that's the 8th generation 4-core. The Core i5 is still a 4-core CPU, but that's still a pretty good strong performance there. That base model has 8 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs is the maximum possible, and it has a hard drive, a 1 terabyte spinning hard drive instead of an SSD, like all the other XPS 15 configurations, and it has no dedicated graphics. It just has Intel UHD 6 30 graphics. So that's what you get for your $9.99. Now our model, which is pretty nicely configured, kind of the sweet spot, a lot of people who buy one of these kind of want some performance, that's why you're buying it. And it's about $2,100. It's the Core i7-8750H. That's the same Core i7 we've seen in a whole bunch of mobile workstations, gaming laptops, the 15-inch MacBook Pro entry-level model. It's 2.2 gigahertz base clock speed. We have 16 gigs of DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM. And we have a 512 gig NVMe SSD. Ours happens to be a Toshiba brand. I know some of you are Samsung enthusiasts. Well, Dell uses a whole lot of different manufacturers because they make a whole lot of these laptops. Probably it's just a matter of how much they can get supplied from each manufacturer. Ours does have the switchable graphics that everything except for that base model will have. So what they've done this year is they've gone to the GTX 1050 Ti, but it's the Max-Q version. The Max-Q is the lower, 10% lower power, 10 to 15% less performance version of the standard card, 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM inside. So last year was just a regular GTX 1050. So in terms of performance, because you're going up to a 1050 Ti, but then you're max queuing it and dropping the performance, it's probably pretty much a wash. But it sounds on paper, a blush, it looks like an improvement because it's a Ti version, which is a little bit more performant. Yeah, whatever. And we have the 4K display option. So for $2,100, bucks, that's not bad. Certainly it's cheaper than the 15-inch MacBook Pro with a similar configuration that it's going to be competing with here. And it comes in under the Razer Blade. Of course, the Razer Blade 15 has much more powerful graphics. We'll talk a little bit about those comparisons. And of course, we are going to have smackdowns with the MacBook Pro and with the Razer Blade 15. Speaking of the MacBook Pro, the XPS line has always been Dell's answer, and a fairly successful answer to the Mac for those folks who are thinking about switching to Windows, but still want something that's put together pretty nicely, has high-end specs and all that sort of thing. So it inherits some of the goodness. It's almost as thin as a 15-inch MacBook Pro, which means it's pretty insanely thin, but something with this level of performance. Very good build quality. quality. It's got an aluminum casing. It's very rigid. The display options in this are lovely. You've got two. You've got that full HD matte display, non-touch, and then there's the 4K touchscreen, which also, by the way, they never talk about this, but it supports the pen, the Wacom AES pen, which is the Dell Active Pen that works with the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. They use the same display, the XPS 15 2-in-1 4K in this one. Cool. Go figure. The ergonomics, however, if you're using the pen, well, it's a little awkward because this is, display doesn't even go all the way flat back. And once you discover that you're trying to take note taking or drawing on something that's upright, it might be a little bit dubious. But anyway, back to the whole Mac thing. The drawback of kind of copying in some ways what Apple is doing is you have the same thermal challenges. And the XPS 15 for the past couple of generations has run kind of hot and has had thermal throttling issues. And this one, of course, you're adding two more cores to it, even though we're still staying at that 45 watt CPU class of 
CPU inside, uh, it, it runs even hotter than it did before by a bit. So it, it, we see the same temperatures that we see on the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro and a bit higher than the razor blade doing the same task, say doing a hand-breaking code or doing something in Premiere. Not talking about AAA title gaming, that sort of thing, because this really isn't geared towards that. The GTX 1050 Ti is still an introductory level gaming graphics card. It's too thin, there's too much heat, this is not really a gaming laptop, folks. There are gaming laptops, including some thin and light ones like the MSI GS65 Stealth Thin, for example, the Gigabyte Aero 15X, and that Razer Blade 15. We reviewed all of those. And of course, Dell's own G7 doesn't look nearly as classy. It's not finished in metal, but you have options for that. This is not it. So we have thermal challenges here. We just have the Core i7. They do offer a Core i9, and as I keep telling you folks, the Core i9 is just a marketing thing from Intel this time around. It's really just the same as the Core i7 HK overclockable processor from the previous generations. So same six cores inside, a little bit faster cache, that sort of thing, a little higher clock speed, about 300 megahertz, more than the 8850H, for example. This chassis, really not a good place for it. It's too thin. Same thing with the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro. In fact, Dell's own Alienware 17 R5, that big moose of a laptop, when gaming, has trouble keeping the Core i9 cool, even without overclocking it. So stick with the Core i7 with this. Definitely a good idea for thermals. I wish that they had changed the cooling inside. If you open it up and take a look, which we are going to do, you'll see pretty much the same cooling design with very few changes from the previous generation. Enthusiastic end users have done things like gotten little tiny metal fin heat sinks and put them on the VRMs and the MOSFETs and things. That can help. It actually can. And put some thermal padding on, some of which is thermal pads, you know, like Fuji Poly that you can actually stack up until they're touching the bottom of the case. Then you're using the bottom of the case as one big heat spreader. The drawback is, is the Dell XPS 15 as it is, doesn't get that hot on the bottom. You push it hard, it'll get toasty, but not burning hot. Once you start transferring that heat to the casing, it's gonna get very hot on the bottom like those gaming laptops, thin and like gaming laptops that I mentioned. So that's up to you. You can also underclock this using Throttle Stop or Intel XTU. That's gonna take the edge off of some of the CPU performance things that we see here in terms of throttling. Oh well, all thin and light powerful laptops do throttle to a certain extent. It's either going to be because of heat or it's because it's the way the CPU is designed. It's supposed to use 45 watts of power. It's allowed to burst up to whatever the manufacturer decides, but only for short periods of time. It's going to have to throttle power back as well. This is what you're looking at here. The Dell XPS 15 line is not for the mobile workstation crowd. It's not for the gaming crowd. It's for those of you who want an elegant, high-end, nice laptop. And your workload probably isn't that heavy. Maybe you occasionally do some video editing. You're certainly using MS Office, streaming some video. Maybe you're doing some code compiles. That's pretty good for code compiling, that sort of thing. Not mobile workstation level, not gaming level. Mostly thanks to the thermals and the thin design. Again, we're sounding like we're talking about a MacBook Pro here. So in terms of benchmarks, it sits exactly where we would expect it to versus its competition. It does just fine. This is not a GPU powerhouse, like I said, but that GTX 1050 Ti isn't a slouch either. It is good enough for introductory level gaming and certainly to give Adobe Premiere Pro a little bit of that oomph, or more than a little bit, to make some graphics rendering effects faster using After Effects and all that sort of thing. So that's nice. And though, yes, it does thermal throttle, and though you'll see those CPU temperatures running hot, which may make one wonder how many years this laptop is going to last, I, the performance levels for everyday normal use are pretty good. When doing something like doing handbraking code or Adobe Premiere, that sort of thing, Blender, all that, uh, it, does, it still performs well. It still performs about 30% faster than the previous generation, which is good. So that means that even with some throttling, it's not dropping the clocks down a whole lot all the time. So we do have more performance here. Ports are the same as the last generation. You do have a Thunderbolt 3 port that's full for PCIe lanes, 40 gigabit per second, HDMI 2.0 to USB type A ports there. Of course, a headphone jack and an SD card slot. So relative to other laptops in this size class, it is a little port constrained. You're not gonna get ethernet. You're not gonna get display port. There are dongle, USB-C dongle adapters and docks. Dell makes them. Other companies make them as well. So again, a little flare of the Mac there, but certainly much better than say the Dell XPS 13 higher end model that only has Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports or the Dell XPS 15 two-in-one, which is similarly ultra port constrained just with the Thunderbolt ports there too. So like I said, the display options are almost identical to last year. They still have that full HD matte display. Dell says that it has full sRGB coverage. I believe it probably does in the usual 75% of Adobe RGB, 400 nits. And the display we have, which is the 4K display, a sharp IGZO display. And the difference is, is this 
secretly supports the Wacom AES pen or the Dell Active Pen. It's still the same sharp IGZO kind of panel, which means that you have really good color gamut. They say 100% of Adobe RGB, and they're right. Well, it hit 98%, and in, also excellent for NTSC rating. It's a good panel. The only drawback with sharp IGZO is it's improved a lot over the years. It used to have kind of blown out colors and really bad color accuracy. It's improved a lot, but you can see in our, our display color accuracy analysis for our Spider Elite colorimeter that the reds are still way out of whack. Now, when you look at the display, it looks pretty nice, and after calibration, it doesn't change a lot. It still looks pretty nice, but it's not really super color accurate, but it looks pretty good at least. It doesn't look, nobody's like blooming red or something like that when you look at and watch a movie, that sort of thing. So it's a lovely display. Obviously it supports touch too. So battery life, really not changed much from last generation either, which is a good thing because battery life is pretty good. Here's the two catches with that one. Not that there's anything wrong, but there are two battery options. You'll only see the smaller battery in that base $999 model that comes with a hard drive. That one has a 56 watt hour battery instead of the usual 97 watt hour battery which is huge that you'll get in every other configuration because that hard drive takes up space where the bigger battery would go. This is what Dell has been offering because that's the trade-off space is space. It has a 130 watt charger and the other reason that your battery life is going to vary is it depends whether you're getting a full HD or 4K display. There's a big difference in battery life, about two hours in runtime, so it's up to you which trade-off you prefer. That nicer looking display, the pen, the touch features versus the longer battery life. Typically I find with light to moderate use, again your MS Office, you're streaming some Amazon Prime or Netflix video, doing a couple of Photoshop edits, maybe a little work in web development, that sort of thing. I usually get about six and a half to seven and a half hours with the 4K display option. That's really not kicking in the dedicated graphics much, doing those kind of tasks. If you are doing things that use the GPU heavily, then obviously battery life will probably drop by as much as half. So here's the proverbial elephant in the room with the XPS line, particularly the XPS 15, a little more than the XPS 13, and that's stability and crashes and just some of those weird things that seem to happen with the XPS 15s more than some other laptops. Yeah, and this is, you know, this, this laptop has been out for a couple of months because they took so long to get us reviewers units, and I'm still seeing a few problems. We have the latest, greatest BIOS, all the latest drivers. Most of the problems I'm seeing are related to the dedicated graphics. There's something going on there that's still not good, let's put it that way. Now, I started with the, the, the factory NVIDIA drivers, which are from December of 2017, or like the 397 version drivers. We're up to late 398s now from NVIDIA. Because sometimes, you know, especially when you get Windows Creator Update in the mix for spring and the graphics drivers, things can happen. So stock factory out of the box, that kind of thing with the Creator's Update. Uh, the GPU gave us some problems, particularly GPU disconnected or unplugged error messages, which drop you into a debug screen. Not quite your usual blue screen of death, but it'll just reboot the machine what happens. So some of the benchmarks that we normally run, like we'll often run 3D Mark Pro's Skydiver test. It just crashed and rebooted every time. The older 3D Mark 11 benchmarks also crashed and wouldn't run. Some games, sometimes they would crash as we went in. It seems like sometimes the GPU temperatures are not being managed and throttled back as much as they should. So that's the problem that I've noticed. Other than that, though, in terms of audio, the, the, I haven't had any real tech audio problems or anything like that. A decent, by the way, the same, okay, stereo speakers are on board here. So with Dell, it always takes a little extra loving and a couple extra months, it seems like, for them to get everything work ironed out. And so far, it's only the, the dedicated graphics that are really giving me problems. Opening this up is just like the last year's model. Torx T5 screws around the edge and then underneath the door here, two Phillips head screws. So don't forget about those. Take off the cover, it comes off very easily. This is a thick, nice piece of metal, I have to say. And it's not sharp like the XPS 15 2-in-1 that, well, actually cut through my finger now. So there's your cover. And inside we see pretty much again like what we saw last year. Here's our big 97 watt hour battery. That's just about the biggest that is allowed by airlines to take on board an aircraft. This is our M.2 SSD NVMe and they have a little cooling tape on here, sticky stuff. Now I didn't mess this up actually. It was kind of folded over. Somebody made a little mistake at the factory so I have flattened it out. This, for those of you who are wondering, the and by the connector is the one that's the most important to cool. So this actually touches the case a little bit and left an oil mark on the case, so that is pretty obvious. So they're using the case as a heat sink for the SSD, which is a good idea. Your two RAM slots right here. 
and our two fans. Our socketed Wi-Fi card is right there. And a cooling solution, kind of on the small side, considering the relative horsepower inside here. Again, it's pretty much like last year. These, the VRMs and the MOF sets and stuff are pretty much all still exposed. Some people like to cool these down. Some people are even putting cooling tape, much like what's on the SSD, or heat sinks on the RAM too, because there's a Dell sensor that's near the RAM. So if this area gets too hot, sometimes it throttles back just because of that. So our GPU and our CPU here, and they are still using a tripod heat sink kind of design on this side for the CPU three screws holding this down. Tension seems reasonably even on ours in terms of core temperature differentials. There is about up to a five degree centigrade difference between core temperatures. And the fairly average sounding speakers are located right here. So they fire towards the front, towards you at least, but a bit down at the table. So that's the Dell XPS 15 9570 for 2018. More cores, tastes better, less filling. I don't know, it's still very thin, it's still very light, certainly less filling. This is one of the thinner, lighter, 15-inch powerful laptops that you can get in Windows land. And it is indeed faster, and unfortunately it also still runs pretty darn hot like it did before. The display is still lovely, that 4K option is very nice, other than color accuracy not being like awesome sauce for those of you thinking jumping ship from the MacBook Pro or something like that. That would be one issue, though this one is higher resolution of 4K. For its target audience, which really isn't the mobile workstation crowd or the gaming crowd primarily, though you might want to do a little of that sometimes, that's why you're looking at this more performant machine. But for those of you who are just looking for something classy, well-built, nice keyboard, good Microsoft Precision trackpad, good display quality, it ticks all of those boxes. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. Thumbs up if you like this vid.